The next item is item number five. Item number four is being withdrawn and will um, not be presented. So item number five is an application for a certificate of appropriateness at 192 7th Avenue South in the Greenwich Village Historic District, docket number 14-7382, block 613, lot 53 in Manhattan, a one-story commercial building built in 1920 and altered after 1940. This is an application to demolish the existing building and construct a new building. And this was initially presented on April 1st, 2014. Morning commissioners, Timothy Shaw, preservation staff. 192 7th Avenue South is located at the southwest corner of 7th Avenue South and West 11th Street within the Greenwich Village Historic District. The application, which is for the demolition of a one-story building and the construction of a new building, was presented at the April 1st, 2014 public hearing. The initial proposal can be seen here. At the hearing, there was public testimony from the Historic Districts Council and Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation. Both groups felt that the designs of the street facades of the building were neither harmonious with each other nor with the neighboring buildings and that the materials needed to be restudied. There was also testimony from Council Member Corey Johnson requesting that the applicant present their revised design to his office prior to their return in front of the commission, which they have done. At the hearing, the commissioners asked the applicant to restudy the design to better integrate the 7th Avenue and West 11th Street facades and to restudy the detailing of the two facades. And you can see the revised proposal here. Cass Stackelberg of the Kingdom Employees Bar Partners will present the revised proposal. Okay. We'll reopen the hearing. Good morning, Commissioners. Cass Stackelberg, Kingdom Employees Bar Partners. Thank you, Tim. Um, as Tim said, we were here uh, in April to present uh, this as of right residential uh, development on the corner of 7th Avenue South and 11th Street. Um, uh, the project involves uh, the demolition of this one-story uh, taxpayer building and the construction of a four- and five-story um, brick, uh, metal, and glass residential building in the corner. Uh, the property uh, is located on this uh, dynamic intersection between 7th Avenue South, Greenwich Avenue, and 11th Street. Uh, and what we have done um, in this design, and Ed Carroll, uh, the project architect, will take you to the design revisions, we've made an effort to sort of respond to this, uh, this site in particular and this sort of um, interaction between 7th Avenue and this uh, public improvement that came along with the, the subway construction and a very different scale and, and character along 11th Street and the sort of smaller scale row house uh, character of, uh, of the West Village. Um, a bit of history just for, for some of the commissioners who were not here um, back in April. Um, this is the project site here. Um, as some of you probably know, um, 7th Avenue was extended uh, during the construction of the subway from 11th Street down to uh, Houston Street. This map here shows uh, the route of the subway cutting through the fabric of, of this portion of the city. Um, this is a map from 1911 uh, showing the, the warehouse building that existed on the site previously. Um, and then uh, a 1916 map showing the cut through this block here. Uh, our site is this sort of leftover here right at this corner. Uh, this is a, a photo from uh, 1918. Um, and so this site sort of pairs this interaction between this cleave from the construction of the subway through the sort of smaller scale um, uh, uh, context of the village. Um, the existing building that is on the site, um, as Tim mentioned, part of the application involves the demolition of this building. Um, the building on the site um, was originally constructed in 1920 um, as a metal panel and glass uh, taxpayer building. In 1946, it was replad uh, with brick, um, and that is uh, what one sees today. Uh, it's not in particularly good condition. It hasn't been particularly well maintained. And we feel that uh, the building itself is not a, a contributing structure to the district. It's really not what the district is, uh, is, is known for, uh, even this portion uh, of the district, which is sort of in between the sort of commercial and residential character um, of the neighborhood. Um, we looked at, uh, in April, we, we spent much more time on this and looking at some of the other pro properties that had been included in the, de in the Greenwich Village um, designation and those that had been demolished under commission approval and looking at some of the new buildings that were constructed. 
Um, these are two of a larger sample that we looked at in April. Um, down here, uh, this building on 7th Avenue South, uh, 117th uh, 7th Avenue South, and then this up on Greenwich Avenue. Um, two different uh, building scales, but sort of similar in the fact that these were sort of holdover, or sort of um, uh, placeholder buildings, taxpayer buildings that were really designed, this one in particular, uh, to sort of uh, take the time during, uh, during which a, a larger scale development could be done. This property actually was constructed as a theater historically. Um, and uh, was replaced by this, uh, by this structure, um, and then uh, this on, on 7th Avenue South. Um, we believe, as I said before, that the existing building at 192 really isn't uh, a contributing feature of the, build, of the district and really isn't characteristic of the buildings that make it such a rich uh, and varied architectural um, context. Um, and then before we uh, continue with, with a design proposal, just looking again at the, at the existing uh, intersection, as I said, it's this very dynamic intersection between Greenwich Ave, 7th Avenue South, and 11th Street. Um, there's quite a bit of development going on right now uh, on this, uh, in this site. The St. Vincent site is being redeveloped uh, at this corner. The MTA is constructing a new building as part of a, a ventilation project here. Uh, and this, uh, this site, which will be uh, a new park, uh, will be I believe going under construction soon. Uh, this is the existing context of our one-story structure here on the corner, um, and then the proposed, uh, the proposed, which, as you can see in terms of the massing, um, a four-story four story, uh, piece on, on the avenue, and then a five-story piece that is uh, consistent in scale with the properties on 11th Street. Um, when you saw this before, there weren't comments so much about um, the demolition of the one-story building or the massing um, and organization of the, of the um, new building. The questions really, uh, or comments really, were about the, what you um, characterize as a sort of commercial nature of the 7th Avenue sign, which I think we've addressed in the color of it as well. And also, I think you wanted, you wanted to see more texture and articulation to the brick, which I think um, we've responded to as well. Um, and, and Carol will take you through, uh, through the design changes. Thank you, Cass. Thank you, Cass. Good morning. My name is Ed Carroll. I'm with SRA Architecture and Engineering and Design for this project. I'd like to thank the commissioners for allowing us to represent our development of our ideas. And I'd like to thank the staff in particular for working with us to improving the design. Um, the, the genesis of the project really is about representing the sort of collision of the historical nature in the context of Greenwich Village and the introduction of the subway. The fenestration was very literal representation of that in our previous iterations, and I think part of the comments by the commissioners were, uh, how do we um, make that a little more sympathetic and a little more subtle? So what you'll see, we're providing some contrast, the old design and the new design to understand the evolution of those ideas. Uh, additionally, there are some interesting urban planning features that we've accomplished currently. This particular intersection uh, lacks fair amount of definition because there are vacant or low-scale buildings there. Part of our proposal is to introduce uh, enough mass to help try to redefine the street walls in this area. Let's see if I can get this correct. Uh, the previous design had, again, literally glass representing the collision of the new introduction of the subway with masonry uh, representing the extension of the existing context and scale. Uh, both were very abstract. The masonry uh, had very little detailing and was intended to look like, you know, a, a very modern interpretation of what was previously there. And then the glass was uh, expressed very literally in contrast to that. We also were using uh, white as our suggested material. The uh, revised proposal does several things. One, it introduces a more highly articulated uh, facade for the pieces of the building which are masonry, which includes introductions of soldier courses, I'll show you some details, and relief and the lintels and, and the sills so that there is shadowing and then also there are deep recesses where the windows are to create uh, that further articulation. Uh, we've introduced masonry rather than metal spandrels into the 7th Avenue facade. We still want a lot of glass to be symbolic of that modern expression, but we also want the connection between the old and the new to be a little bit more literal. Finally, we introduced black in lieu of white, which I think actually has a certain amount of grittiness to it, although this grittiness isn't really the nature of this 
district, the, this idea that the subway goes crashing through the existing district, the character of the darker surfaces, darker metal materials, I think, is, is more sympathetic to what we see up and down 7th Avenue South. Second view, again, this is more really about context. Again, we're trying, there are, because of the zoning restrictions, we really can't get up to the larger buildings which you see on 7th Avenue, but we've tried to get the mass out to 7th Avenue so that we can introduce a building which is more consistent with what we see on that street. This is the revised. I mean, I really think that also with the black uh, that you read the fenestration in a different way than you do with the white and you get a texture associated with that fenestration which I think is, is a positive element to the design. Uh, this is a previous design on 11th Street. You'll see, again, very abstract. There were little planes of metal that had been introduced. The idea was to bring more of 7th Avenue onto the side street in this particular approach and only having articulation at maybe the lintels of the buildings. The alternative to that is to actually take and now introduce multiple uh, soldier crossings at both the sill and at the uh, lintels of the buildings, which then pick up what previously was metal, the continuity of 7th Avenue wrapping around onto the side street, or in this case, the continuity of the masonry of the side street wrapping around onto 7th Avenue, and then allowing the, the black metal pattern of the glass to slide behind those masonry openings so that we have a sense of, of the sort of randomness associated with that rather than just infilling the windows with static, you know, double hung windows. We've introduced a fairly deep base of gray granite. Uh, we, even though there is commercial uses on the first bay on the side street, we've brought the masonry down to the street so there's certain solidity associated with that. And you get a sense of the, the depth and the amount of articulation we're looking to achieve uh, in the masonry in that particular rendering there. Uh, the last, well maybe not the last few, but again this is just the view looking on 7th Avenue, we intentionally pulled the masonry onto 7th Avenue at the back here. This rear facade basically lines up with all the other brownstones. You'll see this chamfering element which occurs quite often along 7th Avenue where the subway literally just chopped it off. In some cases the people left it, looked like chop off, in other cases people turned it into entrances of the building. There was a variety of, of, of features or, or transitions. In this case, we want to bring it down and still allow the commercial piece to continue. Also, this is a way for us to transition because there are a lot of coverage requirements between the commercial and the, uh, and the residential uses. So we use that as a vehicle to not let this last piece look like some sort of random element that's associated with the project. Uh, so I was, this was really the previous design, but I'm still talking about the features. And again, here, now we're introducing the masonry which is a continuation of 11th Street, the darker mullions, the transparent storefront. We've eliminated, if you look at the old uh, design, there was three levels of glass there, which was some concern. We've made it two. The top piece would be uh, louvers for the introduction of fresh air for the uh, commercial spaces. And then, uh, you know, I think, again, what you see here is our attempt to somehow integrate the two different sides while still maintaining the continuity of our idea. And then lastly, uh, we, in order to transition between the side street, which is this high, all the brownstones on the side are this height, we introduced a, a like a studio type skylight. As we showed previously, that's an element that occurs randomly but often in this neighborhood and it allows us to again get as much bulk as we can into the building in an appropriate location. And here again you'll see the cornice. Uh, again we're trying to articulate both with an expression of, of depth and of changing the orientation of the masonry. Finally I just want to discuss the material for proposing. The majority of the building is masonry. This board, uh, the range, we're looking for a range of of brick, natural material, it will be integrated. The, the manufacturer didn't get it quite perfect, but the range we look for is from this light masonry to the dark that you see here. 
it'll be a wire cut, regularly shaped brick uh, that we're proposing. The glass we're proposing is clear glass. It will have a low coating for the energy coat. The metal would be a black metal, probably with a slight hint of brown on the warmer side we'd like. And then a piece of home granite for the base of the building where it lands on the street. Uh, that's our presentation for today. Thank you. Uh, questions for the applicant? Yes, Roberta? What was the brick on the top for? Uh, it's just that just to show the range. No, it'll all be mixed range together. Range of colors. Range of colors, that's but correct. But the style, but the brick is the, the, the brick. The brick style will be the wire. So it's, just, so it's like two or three colors, you're saying? Or yeah, it's, it, we wanted to capture the range because I, mean, I, I think that brick has the, the natural materials that it's, it's not the more modern times that you see a completely uniform color of brick that was being produced. So we'd like to have a little bit of texture that's associated with that. So that brick is shown on at the top. That's not, that's the same color? It's exactly the same, same color, color as this. Okay. It's just the way the rendering is oh, represented. Okay. All right. Um, other questions? Or, any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, in that case, we can close the hearing. Okay. Yes, comments. Um, forgive me, I, I was not here when you first presented the project, so it's uh, new to me, and I'll try not to send it in a different direction. Um, I, I, actually, um, I actually appreciate the previous design in, in, in terms of um, its supporting your, um, the, the kind of the words you used, it, specifically collision. The, the previous design, I thought, was the meeting of kind of two different, entirely different sensibilities and styles um, in the all glass, sort of glass and metal, and then meeting the, um, the brownstone or, and, and the brick, uh, the townhouse um, language. And, and so in that sense, it, it really expressed the collision. I think, though, a more interesting approach is one that takes into account this kind of slicing or cutting through the, the townhouses, slicing through that fabric. And I am not sure that this, although it makes some effort to, to move in that direction, that this proposal does that all the way. I think that the, using the, the, some of the, um, the texture, the, the black uh, towards the brown, as you were saying, metal, and beginning to bring the kind of the, the system of the, of the floor plates as brick forward does that. But it, if you really imagined the, the, um, the townhouses as being cut through, this elevation on 7th Avenue would, would look a little bit different. It would really, it would really read as, as a cut. We might see masonry kind of uh, all, all the way around the openings with, with some sort of setting back of, of the glass or of the, of the larger opening. So, and just the one thing I'd like to say, so if that can't be achieved, the full expression of cutting, m my issue would be with this little corner bit. The notion that 7th Avenue should not wrap around into 11th Street, but really 11th Street should run up into 7th Avenue. It's, it's the turn that kind of throws it off entirely, but sort of tries to allude back to your collision thing. So. Just to, just to clean up the, the, the ideas and the, and the expression of those ideas. All right, I just have a, a couple of other thoughts. One is that, um, uh, you know, I know 7th Avenue very well. I live close by. I am sure some of you know it too. It's a very, very interesting uh, street. And at one level, one would think is really a part of a historic district, but it is. And because there's just such a wide variety uh, of buildings along it with very different responses. Um, I think that uh, I wasn't here when the first uh, hearing took place, uh, but my understanding is that in some ways this, uh, pro the current proposal really responds to some of the issues that were raised at that hearing. So not to say that these comments aren't valid, but it's about 
the direction that the applicants uh, received and what they heard about uh, the treatment of this building and its various facades and how they should be integrated. I think some of the things that I like about the building is, uh, which may actually cause to some degree the wraparound, is that if you look at it from the side street, I think that with this additional articulation and the articulation of two bays, it does seem to continue the rhythm of the side streets and the, uh, the width of, because actually they have a larger width and frontage than uh, most of the, uh, the, um, the row houses have, and they've tried to articulate that. Um, I think another comment had to do with just integrating these facades a bit more, and I think uh, their sort of response to that was to, in, to do it through material. Uh, one approach for looking at the site could be this idea of commercial and separated from uh, residential and the, the, what is the word they use? Cl clash, I can't remember exactly. What is collision? But that is a necessary uh, uh, collision, but I, and maybe that's uh, an appropriate response, but I think that the integration of these uh, two elements uh, doesn't make it inappropriate. Um, so I think that in some ways, uh, their recent design actually responds very much to the feedback that they got from the commission. Um, other comments or questions? Yeah, uh, any? Are we uh, satisfied with this approach as a response to commissions? Yes, uh, Michael. Uh, you know, I, I guess as one of the as one of the people who commented on it last time, yes. uh, um, I think that the the source of the concern at the last hearing was that what you had was kind of two buildings, right? And that it really, you know, we all hear the presentation when you're walking down Seventh Avenue, you don't have a little plaque that tells you what the concept is. And uh, what it really just looked like was a kind of pretty straightforward commercial building of a triangular shape plunked up against a pretty traditional building of a more or less rectilinear shape. Um, and that they really weren't talking that much to each other. Um, we've seen a bunch of buildings in the latest uh, boom that have dealt with these sites ranging from one on Houston Street, one I think on Hudson Street in Tribeca, one down the block from this. And they all take different responses. And it's funny because I think most of them, most of them, if not all of them, started with the trying to manifest the cut. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, we're gonna show, we're gonna conceptualize and architecturally manifest that, 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 that cutting through. Um, and they all just looked like crappy buildings when they started out, and, and, and as, they kind, as the architects kind of moved through it, um, they might have moved a little bit away from that conceptual approach, but they, I think they wound up being better buildings, uh, whether they were better conceptual exegeses, I can't say, but they were better buildings, I think. Um, so I think that the, the comments at that time were to try to make this a building and not two or three, and to make it a good building. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think that it still feels very uh, kind of broken apart. I don't, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that the, mo that the, you know, to have a glass part of a building and a masonry part of a building is fine. And if you looked at some of the examples that they showed, there were glassy parts and masonry parts, and they seemed to work together in a logical way. Um, I, I still feel like there's a real break between the two parts of the building. Uh, I think that the application of the brick in the spandrels is, I guess, okay. Uh, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't address the, the, the schism between the two parts. I mean, is it an appropriate building? I guess it is. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's appropriate to the district. Um, but I still think it's, you know, it, could, be a, could it be a better building. Could yes, be a probably. better building, but I think it's appropriate. I, mm -hmm. I think that I think that just as a minor, minor comment, I, I think that the door to the store should be in the in the little doorway that's made with the masonry. It seems like a kind of a natural thing that should happen. That would uh, make that. If you look at, down down Seventh Avenue, there's the little strip of brick oh, that comes right. down, mm -hmm. and there's like a doorway there. Right, the doorway. I should would just be. say that you know that that ought to be used just mm -hmm. to kind of activate that conceptual. Mm -hmm. 
conceit, which I think is, I think, the most successful part of the scheme, because if you look to the building next door to it, it does the exact same thing. Right, it's, right. It, I think that, that is very typical of, of mm -hmm. the 7th Avenue cut. Okay, uh, other comments? Yes, Rebecca? Um, okay, so I'm sitting here trying to, I was here when they did mm -hmm. the other presentation, now I'm trying to remember what did we say that made them change some things that I actually liked about the first one more. I, and I think that we were saying that we wanted somehow to um, make the, the glass portion, um, we wanted to, to integrate it more into the, to the masonry portion, mm -hmm. which it seems like they're two portions. And so to do that, then the masonry, or maybe it was our suggestion to add the masonry to, to bind it over. Um, but somehow, for me, in doing that, it, it loses something. I think it's appropriate, and I could vote right, yes. Right, right. But I'm just saying, in some ways, there's some aspects of the original that were more interesting now, mm -hmm. than looking at the two than this. Um, so I could go with this. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure that um, that this is what we were trying to do. I just think that, that maybe when we said this combining thing and, and, and to integrate it more, that this is the way it goes. But I, right. I mean, right, you could, I, they could have done another response. They could have put more glass on the side street. I mean, yeah. that's a very sort of different kind of thing. change to the, to the black. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, is it that because we're saying that there's more black in the other um, surrounding storefronts, and so we right. just wanted to pick up on that, or the, the trim of the brownstones are usually dark, and that might I know so that, I'm just, uh, right, and I, you know, the color, the the, right, the color schemes are, uh, I don't know if uh, the commission gave them direction on that. I know that in the village we've seen many schemes where you have brick and you have glass and then you have the dark metal in the frames. That I think which there, there is, I think, uh, a building that's like saying in the meatpacking district that was done uh, several mm -hmm. years ago. And that has a very, very similar palette to this. So perhaps this is looking at examples that have been tried and tested and have been found appropriate. Can I ask a question about yes. the, um, the 45 or almost corner? Is that, is that something you have to um, respect? As opposed to a sharp corner? As opposed to a sharp well, corner. The answer to that is yes, but for a variety of reasons. There are lot coverage requirements. There is, the building is set back slightly to, and so we have a street wall requirement to go along with that. There, it is some reference to the previous building on the site, which has the only even moderately architectural element on the previous site was the chamfered corner. And it, there is a subjective quality to that. I mean, I agree with your statements regarding the intentionality of the collision, but I also, there's a compositional element of turning 7th Avenue on the angle, but not on the piece that's uh, parallel to 11th Street from a purely architectural point of view. Right, and I think on 7th Avenue, you actually see both responses. You see the responses where the buildings are chamfered, and I, I know of one example where it's a sharp corner, but that sharp corner is actually, I think, outside of the... Right, the but you, you agree that if this was a sharp, if it, if it didn't have the chamfer, that there, you, there might be a response that would say you could pull the brick all the way to the end so that it, so that it looked as though it was just a kind of a, on the 7th Avenue side, a thin wall of brick, and then the glass begins. The answer is yes. But right. it's not possible, you're saying. Well, um, yeah. there's a rhythm of brownstones that we were respecting in terms of the width of the brownstone. This is the second full bay of brownstone that matches the rhythm of that. So uh, I was being very literal about where we interrupted that. Had I had a little more, in other words, if we were going to cut through and start the third piece of brownstone, in other words, the, and this is very architectural, but yeah, whatever. If, you, if we then space where the next one would have been, there, and we cut it, there's not enough to create yeah, the, the suggestion of that next piece of bay. So, um, Why? Well, it'd be like a half a bay. You'd have to reapportion. You know, this is just a subjective perspective, but when you want to see, it's like a movie. If you ever see a set on a, a movie, there's so little it actually there, your mind is constantly finishing what that composition is. But there has to be enough there 
to suggest the final composition. I didn't think there was enough masonry there, and also there's a functional matter in terms of the perspective of what we can do with that corner. I know the buildings you're referring to further south. I can't say that I'm, from a pure architectural perspective, I agree. see them as a success. No. Uh, so. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, uh, so let's just sort of uh, go back to whether uh, the building before us is uh, whether we can make the finding of appropriateness and um, are there concerns about being able to make that finding? And again, I just want to say that uh, we may see different responses to site and various responses can be made, be considered appropriate. Any comments or concerns? Are, are we ready to vote on this then? You know, it's just a little bit too bad that, you know, the appropriate in this case is in keeping with Seventh Avenue's kind of strangeness, you know, like, and it could have been whether Michael thinks it, I mean, yeah, maybe it could have been more. So, but right. I agree. I think that your it's, point as well is this sort of a missed opportunity for a different sort of response to Seventh Avenue. Yes. You know, I hate to be grossly prescriptive, but um, let me make a suggestion. Yes. And just in thinking about the aspect of appropriateness and trying to kind of separate in my mind that from the success of the architectural thing as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. It strikes me that in looking at, at the street, the solution that the architect came to was to basically take a, a, a quantity of additional masonry and kind of string it in very thin strips along the facade. Um, I would say that it might be more appropriate to the street, given the history of the taxpayers, given the fact that there is a very erratic rhythm, but that there's always kind of a, a kind of a datum at the retail base that separates whatever mm -hmm. is above it. That maybe if you were to kind of increase the amount of masonry, masonry. at the right. at the at bottom, the like from the where it says signage to the span, to the sill of the first window, one could even perhaps reduce the amount of masonry, go back to the cleaner above or leave it, whatever. But I think if you had a heavier band of masonry at the bottom from that, from that mullion, you know, the, the first mullion above the storefront window to the underside of the, of, the, of the next floor's glass, you would create a continuity both with the neighboring building. On that side, you would suggest the proportions of the previous building that was there. And I think it would be generally more in keeping with the, the tenor of the avenue, as I recall it, and also it would, I think, have the benefit of tying it in a little bit more with, with the rest of the building. But it's, uh, I want to know what others would think about that. All right. So it's a, uh, the proposal, uh, it's actually sort of taking some elements of this and the uh, elements of the uh, previous scheme. Because if I understand correctly, it's, and I'm just going to go up here. And point, it's really about sort of bringing this wrap around over here, right, to make it heavier. And then when you talk about the building above, it's to go back I mean, those to... to me, those to me felt like a band-aid, like, all right, they told me to put more masonry on, so I'm going to just, like, change the hatch on that little area. Um, uh, there also was a comment last time to remove... There was an awful lot of spandrel glass, so that might have been an, an attempt to address that. But I think that the, the color change is fine. I don't think they have to go back to it, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, they can work with staff on, on these things, but... Well, really okay, let me just... All, okay, so... Uh, no, it just seems like it would be happier yeah. overall building. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it was actually, for me, a bit more exciting and more interesting uh, that the old top part of that facade that we're talking about now, the glass, um, was more interesting. And that this seems maybe correct in the sense of like doing this uh, tying in mm -hmm. to the adjacent uh, material. But um, it, it's almost like it is something that's you know mandated. They were saying that, that this they have to have that mm -hmm. kind of tie-in. And so maybe if they did explore what we're talking about now and making that tie-in at the base and letting the top, if that's I don't see, I don't well, know I where it came uh, from. I'm not sure it was just us or if it was other comments that suggested. Right, I think it, uh, I, I liked some things uh, about the previous. Right, and I um, I was not here, and I just I sort of set the opening to this more so because it was based on these comments that I've that was heard in my understanding of where the commission was going. Um, 
If the commission feels a better response to this is to actually have a heavier uh, uh, go with uh, Michael's suggestion, I think it doesn't take away from the design of the building, but uh, is a different way of integrating it, which is really to sort of establish the base through in integrating the masonry onto the 7th Avenue facade. And if uh, the commission is uh, feels, I mean, we have seen glossy responses as well. Um, and if we thought and think that the floors above, which are the residential floors, looked better in its earlier scheme of lighter material uh, in terms of the metal and more glazing, then that would, you know, I, I would find that, that that would be appropriate well, too. Uh, just, just for the record, the, if we take a look at um, the picture in the lower right-hand corner of um, page 433, and then we think about all of these options, whether it was their first option, the current one, the ones that we're tweaking for them right now. Mm -hmm. um, I find it hard to say that any of the things that they're proposing are inappropriate. Uh, I understand that. And, I, and I'm uh, it's, 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 so it, looking at how horrendous this other building is, I'm thinking to myself that you know, I, I'm, I appreciate that we're trying to seek perfection here, but I, I'm not sure I could say that anything. I'm not go along with right. all the changes, but uh, I don't think any of it's so, inappropriate. Okay, so when we, let's step back one uh, moment. Our, they have a design in front of us. Can we say that the design in front of us is appropriate? And I think if we all can say that, we should approve it. Yes. Okay, all right. Why didn't we do that? So we're going to close the hearing. Okay, and uh, John, would you like to read that? In the matter of docket number 14-7382192 7th Avenue South, the application is to demolish the existing building and construct a new building. I recommend approval, finding that the existing building is not one for which the Greenwich Village Historic District was designated. Therefore, the proposed demolition will not eliminate a significant protected historic feature of the street, the block, or the Greenwich Village Historic District that the proposed building is of a height and massing that will relate well both to the scale of the buildings on West 11th Street and to the varied scale and geometry of the buildings on 7th Avenue South, which is characterized by buildings of very different sizes and scales on unusually shaped lots that were created when 7th Avenue